Hello, my name is Robert Love, and today I'm going to be speaking about distributed version control systems. Uh, we are going to focus on Git. However, uh, if you are familiar with Mercurial or know about Mercurial, it'll also apply there. It'll also apply in general to uh, a lot of the first uh, uh, 10 minutes of this presentation will be uh, focused in distributed version control in general. Uh, to start off with, uh, Many of us are coming from a background of a centralized server model, such as Subversion or CVS, uh, other, uh, you know, even SourceSafe, or, uh, um, you know, uh, or maybe not even coming from a model at all. And we can, what we're going to do is, is we're going to look at the centralized model and then compare it uh, and how it applies to the distributed. So in this case, we have uh, a, a diagram representing three developers and they're all communicating with a, a centralized repository. There is only one repository in this model, and it's uh, right there at the top. And uh, the developers can have one or more working copies of uh, their code uh, on their machines. Uh, any kind of operation, uh, such as a checkout or looking at the logs or switching branches, just updating, the changes from others, uh, those all require um, you to be connected to that uh, centralized repository. Uh, so if the central repository goes down, your ability to work with the version control system is 100% toast. You don't have a, an option. Now let's look at a distributed model. In the distributed model, um, uh, the, you still could have a centralized repository. However, it's optional. Another thing is, is you could have uh, developers communicating with each other. And, and, and the reason this works is that everybody, in this case we have those three developers down there, they have a, each of them have a full copy of the repository. If you put a centralized repository, say, on a server, uh, that would also have... Um, uh, a full copy. You could have multiple servers, and um, and they also can communicate. It, it, you have many, many options here uh, as far as how you communicate. And how does that really work? Because the repository being on everybody's computer gives us the ability to check out, update, commit, view history, uh, create or switch branches, and a few, uh, many other things. Uh, but they all occur on your local machine. Uh, there's a side benefit to this, and that is uh, I have uh, a server version repository that takes about 45 minutes to do a checkout. Uh, after I have that initial checkout, it then takes about 30 minutes to do a switch if I want to switch branches. Uh, that same amount of data in Subversion uh, the, we, the clone operation, which is the initial checkout similarity, uh, it takes about the same amount of time. It still takes a, a fair amount of time to bring that down. However, um, uh, it is uh, the switching operation, switching from branch to branch, is nearly instantaneous. Uh, and, and so um, the clone here, uh, copies one repository from one location to another. This allows us to say, hey, I have that centralized repository that we're all sharing, and I can clone that down to my machine. And then I use commands like fetch, push, and pull, and they are used to communicate changes between repositories. These can also happen between developers. So two developers could choose to um, be working together on a smaller project, um, and once they've got their changes in sync, they can then, one of them or both, uh, depending on how you, they've worked, um, could be sending those on up to the centralized repository. Typically, it would only be one of them. So let's give um, another diagram to kind of show um, uh, a possible workflow. Here we have, on our working local machine, we have a working directory, a staging area, and the actual Git repository. Uh, 
the repository is a directory and inside of it there's going to be a git directory and that git directory contains that repository with your code just sitting side by side with it and then we have an external repository uh, that you have read write access to so for that I would start off with a clone operation the clone uh, would then copy uh, the files from the, the, the remote server or the external repository wherever it really may lie it could be another developer's machine uh, uh, down to uh, the local machine with that uh, you need to check out a branch now uh, it could be the main branch it could be uh, but you're always working in a branch given that you can also create a new branch you could also say hey from this specific spot I need a branch and I'm gonna start working and uh, once I've now got it in my working directory I'm able to edit the files I'll work on those files after I've done that I then can stage those files uh, this is a really quick operation but basically I need to stage the files say these are the ones that I'm uh, 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 going to send back up where I can then finally commit after I commit I then can push my changes to that read write repository and I get to choose to push those changes by uh, branch so I could say I have five branches I only want to push the changes for this one branch so I, I get a little flexibility of what I want to push uh, out uh, it gives me some internal uh, abilities to uh, manage how I want to present the work I've done to the rest of uh, my team or the world any time during this process I can pull updates from the external repository into my repository um, I can also do something called fetch fetch just says give me the list of changes I have them I can switch to them um, but I cannot uh, 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 but a pull is a fetch and then it also updates my uh, current working copy uh, to be uh, what I need so uh, we have lots of options here but basically this allows me to get those changes back that others may have pushed into that repository now let's look at a different model uh, and uh, when you look at git you're going to find that it's used heavily in the open source world and with that there's a lot of repositories in the open source world that have read-only access for most of us and with that uh, the same operation to clone and check out edit your file stage and commit that still stays the same the big difference here is is there's a code reviewer that has write access and that code reviewer uh, you're able to uh, you send them a pull request now this can be done there's several technologies related to how pull requests work and an example is, is if you were to use a product like github which is a hosting service uh, a pull request uh, is implemented in their own proprietary format uh, as uh, bitbucket has its own and there's actually a pull request that's built into the Glit, the git client itself that's more designed for more of an offline say uh, i get to I have my changes uh, set up in a pull request with uh, that I can then attach to an email and then send um, with that uh, the code reviewer regardless of how they get that pull request gets a chance to review it and when they do uh, they can say hey uh, send it again uh, send that pull request with a different set of changes because obviously we didn't like it but if they accept that change uh, they then push those changes to that uh, external repository with that they can ultimately uh, allow you to, well at that point your change is a visible uh, in the external repository where you can pull that change back down at any time so that's basically uh, some real high-level uh, discussions uh, to start off our next little section here we're going to uh, look at um, the git uh, command line for just a few seconds we're not going to spend an awful lot of time discussing how to operate git from a command line uh, there are a couple of URLs I'm going to present you 
that are really, really good tutorials to learn the command line. And I don't think that uh, uh, this uh, type of presentation lends itself well to uh, learning a command line well. Uh, instead, we're going to look at um, some graphical clients that are out there that uh, will do um, a good portion of what uh, the command line can do. The command line is the primary client, so it can always do more. So if there's something strange that you find that you need in your uh, operations, uh, there is a very good chance that it can be done from the command line, uh, even if you can't find a way to do it in whatever GUI you have. Now, there are several GUIs that are out there. Some of them are commercial that you have to pay for. Uh, some have different degrees of functionality. Uh, ultimately, uh, uh, the one I like the best is SourceTree, and I'm going to use that to demo. The unique thing about SourceTree is its client works for both Mercurial and for Git in the same interface. So uh, it does highlight the fact that with distributed version control, they are uh, very much the same. So after we get those, um, uh, don't worry too much about not being able to, uh, if you didn't get these URLs, I'll have them up as the last uh, slide in the presentation today. Okay, I've switched over to a Windows uh, machine where I have uh, Git installed. With this, I um, can do use the command line. Uh, from that, I have uh, the basic Git. It starts with uh, the Git command line and the subcommand that you want to run. In this case, it's clone. Uh, like I said, this is probably the most we're going to do with the, the, the command line. Um, but I wanted to show this and compare it to, say, the graphical interface that we're going to show two seconds from now. Uh, the next thing is uh, the URL for the remote repository and the directory I want to place that in. So if I run this, um, it will clone the dunitx. You'll see it, it, it come down. And now if I do a directory, I can see the dunitx directory and all the files uh, for that at the latest. It, this is the last, uh, the latest version of the code. Uh, but the whole history is sitting there on my machine. Uh, so uh, we're going to get out of uh, the command line. We're going to do the same thing. Uh, I'm going to paste in that same URL and we're going to uh, 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 and I'm just going to call it uh, the directory I want to put it in, dunitx uh, source tree. Uh, down here, there's a, a bookmark. Uh, there's a repository. That basically shows up on the left as the list of all of uh, the bookmarks that you may uh, uh, of the various repositories you have. Uh, this will work for both uh, Git or Mercurial, and it does detect what type of repository it is. Uh, there's a really quick, cool button. Here, this is browse hosted projects. So if you have uh, a GitHub account, anything that you've starred will quickly show up, uh, or any accounts, the repositories you've created on your own. So I'm, um, uh, or a Bitbucket account, both of those work really well. In fact, SourceTree is from Atlassian uh, that does the Bitbucket, uh, but it works equally as well with GitHub. Uh, now that I have um, this, I can see that I show no modified files here, but if I click on the master branch, you can see the complete history of what's in that master branch right now. And so uh, this uh, allows us to see uh, what's there and the history of uh, what it took to get there. Um, and uh, we can come back to our working copy, the file status over here. And uh, I can open this in Explorer if I were to make a change. So um, uh, I open, um, say, this contributing MD, um, and I just type in, you know, hello world into it, and I save it. I can then go back to source tree. And it will pick up that change 
Uh, with that, I'm able to see the change, and I can stage that here. And at this point, I could commit. Uh, commit then gives me the um, the changes I need, and I press the commit button. But I obviously don't want to change that. I don't want to commit that. So uh, we're going to uh, create a uh, a brand new repository and do many of these operations uh, together. So we'll, uh, I'm just going to discard this, and and now it's there. So we can press the create or the clone new. At this kit point, I want to create a brand new repository. All right. So I'm going to um, c dev uh, code rage uh, slash um, uh, new repo. Uh, and uh, if I hit create, we'll have the new repository over here on the left. Uh, with that, uh, we're able to see our working copy. Uh, and uh, since there's no history, there's really nothing showing up under branches. Uh, we'll talk about remotes uh, a little bit later. But uh, I can now open an explorer, and I can see the new repository, and it has one file in it, .git. The .git file is, uh, it, or not file, it's the directory. It is where the repository is stored. And by default, it is hidden. You can kind of see that it's kind of grayed out here, maybe. Uh, so uh, let's uh, just create a new uh, uh, text document. And we'll just call it uh, demo.text. And with that, I can say uh, uh, 1 plus 1 equals uh, 2. And and then save this and exit out. And by default, you're only going to see the modified files uh, sort of by status. But I've got new files. So I could say all, and I could see every file here. Or I can see just the pending ones. Uh, so if I just select all, in this case, we'll be able to see it. I then can stage that file. I now see the file contents. I have the commit down here uh, that's there. I could have pressed the commit button and it'll expand it up. So this will be, uh, this is my first commit. And I can commit that. And now I have the branch for master showing up. This is the default branch uh, that's available. Uh, now, branching in uh, Git is something that you uh, will find is very natural and happens all the time. Uh, and in fact, the working model uh, is quite often to create a branch. And merging is really quite painless. Uh, so uh, just a heads up on that. But for right now, we're going to show it very similar to what you might use when you're using uh, this what we got here is a personal repository, one that tracks my changes um, for what I might be doing on a personal pet project. With that, um, let's uh, go back to uh, close out a notepad here. Go back to my working copy, uh, and um, you can see that there's. Uh, if I go to Modified, there's nothing there. I'll open and explore one more time. And uh, I can now say, you know, 2 plus 2 equals 4. And we'll save this. And now I also have the same thing. But here we need to show over what you see. You can see that uh, it, it's recognized that I've removed, although I didn't, uh, 1 plus 1 equals 2, and added that line plus another one. And it's smart enough to, to see uh, the differences here. It's not the best uh, diff viewer out there, uh, but it's enough to get you close enough to uh, uh, do what you need to do. So I can just say uh, added uh, another uh, um, add a method. So uh, now if I go back to my ma uh, master, I'm able to see uh, this one or this one. 
And with this, I now have some unique abilities. I could quickly, here, let's just see if I still have this open. Let's go to um, the new repository. All right. And if I open the demo, you'll see both lines are still there. Now, if I go back to um, the first commit, I can check out the first branch. And this is going to call what creates a detached head. There's not a real branch here. Um, but um, I can go to that specific revision if I need to. And now, if I go into the rep that new repository and double click, I will see only that change. It's something that happens very, very quickly. Um, and um, it's easy to switch back and forth. So you'll see how this says head right here. This is where you're really working. And uh, it needs to be attached typically to a branch. Uh, otherwise, you get your, unless you're just browsing to, to look at the files, uh, you probably don't want to do that on a regular basis. So now I have the master here. Uh, that head uh, or the latest revision is, is fine. At this point, say I need to create um, a new functionality. I want to add a whole new paragraph to my my code. And I might uh, want to be doing that in parallel with somebody else who's creating yet another paragraph. Uh, so branching is pretty easy. I can come in here and create a new branch. Um, one of the things that I like to do is, is I like to start my branches for like feature requests uh, with feature. And I, I use this uh, reverse slash here. And then I'm able to say uh, new uh, para uh, for what I'm doing. I can uh, do this. Now you'll see two branches here. And if you'll notice the feature, this allows me to put folders uh, so I can see those uh, features quick, quickly. Um, now if I double click on master, I will see uh, the same thing. They're the, the exact same thing at this point because we haven't done it. So we're uh, whatever's bolded is, is where your working copy is. Um, so uh, now that I have that up, I'm just going to go back to the new repository. Um, and um, add a new paragraph of something. We'll save that. And now as I commit, I will see uh, that change in here again, which I can commit and say added uh, new para. Uh, and now you'll see that they're now slightly different in the, in the history. You'll see that the branch has the new paragraph and the master doesn't. If I switch to the master and go back to uh, that text file, you'll see that it's missing. Now at the top here, I'm going to say uh, added uh, heading. And I'm going to just save this. With that, I can uh, commit this, stage that file up, just hit commit. Um, so I added a heading to the master branch. Now it'll show that uh, there's a diversion between the two. It notices that the paragraph here and the new heading are, are different. Uh, they're, they're heading on two parallel but distinctly different paths, uh, which ultimately, uh, typically you don't want. Usually you want your source code to merge back together. You want uh, the changes from two people to happen. Occasionally you might have something that you've done you want to discard, and this will end, and that's the end of your changes. Uh, but in this case, uh, I should be able to... Uh, uh, merge uh, uh, the demo back uh, into the change and it'll say um, what what's going to happen and so I say yes that's what I want 
commit immediately if there's no conflicts. And now it shows that they're revised, they're back together. If I now go look at the code, it's added the heading and it has the paragraph that I added uh, below. Um, so this shows the way that uh, branches easily merge and go back and forth. And we're just dealing with the simple text file. Uh, this works well with uh, um, uh, your code as well. Uh, now I'm going to show you uh, a little uh, different uh, model. All right. So I'm on the GitHub site now, and we're going to take that new repository that we created, and we're going to uh, share it with the world, uh, at least temporarily, uh, and through uh, placing it out here. Uh, there's two um, major competitors that are out there uh, that uh, host uh, Git repositories. There's many, many minor players uh, that will meet your needs. Uh, just do some searches, figure out what, what's best for you. Uh, but uh, uh, GitHub um, uh, is one, and the other one is Bitbucket. Uh, both have uh, good Delphi uh, open source code on them. So I'm on uh, the GitHub site, and I'm just going to hit Create um, a New Repository. And I'm going to say uh, Code Rage uh, Demo. Uh, demo uh, for code rage right here well it'll be public um, and I will notice this uh, initialize this repository with readme uh, this will um, allow you to clone the repository immediately if you skip this step skip this step if you run git in it locally well in this case we have we ran the local repository so we're we're just going to create this repository, okay? And I will take uh, this uh, URL, and we will uh, move it into um, uh, source tree, okay? Uh, now we're over here in source tree. We have a remote. We can just add a new remote. Uh, a remote is where we're uh, a remote repository. It could be another developer's machine. It, we can have lots of different options here. Uh, we're just going to add one. Um, uh, I can name whatever I'd like, but if it's the default remote, it's going to be named origin. At this point, I'm just going to paste uh, that in, which is going to recognize that it's GitHub. Um, if I hit OK, now I have origin. With that, I should be able to hit push. At this point, I get to choose what I want to push. Now I could push um, just the master branch, or I can push the, the new paragraph branch. Ultimately, since all of the changes of the new paragraph uh, branch were there, I can just push the master and ignore the others. So I'm just going to do that. And with that, the, the changes should show up on the GitHub site. So let's do that. Let's go look. Okay, over on the site, you'll see that uh, uh, the Code Rage demo is here. There's one branch, um, and there's the master branch, and you'll see the demo text with the, the changes that we had. Um, uh, ultimately, um, it's a quick and easy way to deal with that. So that, that, that's a way to get your uh, repositories uh, uh, stored offsite if needed. Really, um, uh, quickly, we're going to go back to um, here, and we are going to launch um, Rad Studio and show you one new feature. So if I go in here, we have tools and options under Rad Studio. So this will work for both uh, Delphi or C++ Builder. And if we scroll down, uh, we have, and I went a little too fast, version control. And Git is one of those options. And all we have to do is specify the Git executable. 
uh, and this is the command line client that uh, uh, we had installed. So I have git bin, and it's out here called git. So I've selected that. If I hit OK, now we'll just open um, a project. Uh, let's go uh, C dev code rage. That last demo that we did, um, I'm in XC7, so we'll open its uh, project group. Um, with this, I could come to, let's just say, the test framework unit. Uh, or, or, oh, sorry, those are the tests. I, I want... Um, the unit test. And this is, uh, or, um, and with that I can click on history and I can see uh, every change that is was made at, that are sitting in the Git repository and who made them. So uh, if I were to uh, look at the test framework, um, you'll see uh, who, who's made the most recent changes uh, to it and who's who's been working on what. You can see those here. I can do diffs. I can select uh, uh, um, uh, if I click on the differences viewer I can say let's compare these two releases and uh, and see down here What's available if you have uh, Beyond Compare installed? There's very, very nice features up here at the top. I don't have it installed right now, uh, but uh, very nice features that it'll automatically launch this uh, comparison and Beyond Compare. Uh, real easy to see. Um, uh, those are um, uh, there. Once I make a change, so let's uh, just go back to the contents here and go to the code. Uh, I'm going to make a change to the test framework. Blah, test framework, uh, change. And uh, I will uh, save this. I can, uh, over here, there's a get menu where I can commit. I can choose to do that on a file basis, but it's easier to just go the whole project. The git commit from the repository root or the project directory. So I typically use the repository root. I like to commit from the, the uh, there. I can see um, uh, that change. I can add a comment and commit it. I can also, since this is something I uh, not sure what I did. Well, actually I am, but I can also view the difference real quick. See what I did. I close that page. I can say I, that's not a change I really want. I can revert it quickly before it's committed, and I have that here. So um, the one thing that uh, the Rad Studio client doesn't offer is uh, the control of the branching. Uh, it uh, but once, say, you're already in your branch, uh, you set up your working uh, copy the way you'd want for what you're going to work on, uh, you launch your IDE, uh, it will then work well as far as a tool to see the changes on a given file, which is really nice and uh, really helpful. Uh, but it also allows us to um, um, uh, uh, go to the commit and do the commit if we want for that very change. Right here in the IDE, see the changes that we have. Uh, it's nice, uh, it will pick up that we've added files here uh, and auto add them and, and, and just get you right ready to go uh, in that respect. It doesn't have, like I said, it doesn't handle the branching and it doesn't handle the push or the pull that I've seen uh, in any way. Uh, uh, that you'll wanna step either into the command line or, or another a tool like source tree um, but then again I don't need that in my IDE what I need my IDE is here is just this the simple stuff uh, I stuff to keep me moving uh, at that level 
uh, I can quickly switch to another tool to finish that off. Um, but when I am working with the files, the files that I'm working with are the ones that it controls. And, and that's what uh, uh, I expect personally. And uh, let's go from there. So at this point, uh, we're uh, nearing the end of the presentation. So what I'm going to do is, is like I promised, uh, bring you up uh, a list of those um, referenced URLs. Uh, go ahead and download that command line client. If you go to the GUIs link, you'll see a link to source tree uh, that we used. Uh, it's also available if you go to the Bitbucket site because they're they're also associated. Um, uh, they're from the same company. Uh, even though they're the same company, uh, Atlassian works equally as well with uh, Atlassian's source tree product works equally well with GitHub or Bitbucket. It also works equally as well with Git or Mercurial. So everything that I showed with it, if you're using a Mercurial repository, you, you can do it. Uh, and sometimes you don't even realize that you are. Uh, that's how easy it is with that tool. Uh, the one thing that is noticeable is uh, inside of the Delphi IDE, there's only Git support, not Mercurial. And so uh, you won't get the histories there. Um, please, uh, this hopefully is just a, a, a brief intro of why they are different and and how to possibly use them i want to thank you uh, for your time and and uh, thanks also um realized i had recorded over an hour of material that uh, did not make it <laughs> so uh, i'm going to uh, publish that separately here in a, in a, in a couple of days excellent yeah i know that's excellent uh you know we're we're going to continue to do more uh, in the ID integration for additional version control. Of course, we had subversion support that we use, and then uh, the Git was added for local, and then there's more to come in, in the ID in the future. Let's see, James is putting, he says, I use a Mac with Parallels, okay. I use Parallels Desktop 10 on my MacBook Pro. And he's running Windows and XZ7, keeps his source code on the Mac side, and has been using Git to manage for several years. I haven't tried the ID support, but I don't have Git installed on the virtual machine. Is there anything I should be worried about with respect to the different line endings, line endings in Mac and Windows? Um, yes, uh, there is. Uh, but the Git um, configuration, you can use the global configuration for Git. The IDE will support and follow those uh, global configurations and you can control how uh, the line endings will uh, be ultimately committed or or, or shared uh, once uh, they're edited by the IDE. They will be Windows line endings on uh, um, your local machine uh, because that's what the IDE does uh, but then ultimately it could be pushed as any type of line ending. It's it's got that kind of configuration, and then been, and when you uh, uh, pull down or check out uh, a branch, you can change that to be the line endings for each one. So it's really quite intuitive in that respect. It's easy to do. Okay, uh, okay, great. I posted a little terse note in response to the question. Um, but in any case, Rob, thank you very much, Robert, for for this session and for showing people a quick look, quick look at the ID integration for Git. And again, Subversion's been there for several versions. There's a file open from version control. And again, Malcolm's 14-minute uh, video t shows uh, same some of the same stuff Robert did and a little bit more. And again, that's for both Delphi C++ Builder Red Studio and App Method uh, September 2014 release. So both of those videos, uh, uh, Rob's blog about his talk today and then the Malcolm YouTube video, just search Malcolm Groves uh, Git integration and you'll get to that video. So Rob, thank you very much. Have a very good night. Okay, bye.